Gold diamond chains make sure I'm standing out. Gucci man shirt slick with appetite. Platinum plus on the hush smooth black as night. On my bun beat she keep it extra trail. Couple dollars in the stash for the extra bills. I can understand why I ain't made it yet. Cause even though I'm nice, I wasn't living correct. And I'm living in debt, but I live with regrets. I'm trying to see my daughters ballin' in the private chat. So whatever it takes, I'm soon to handle that. I trade my soul, I just wanna have my grandma back. You see a shine, never a dull moment. Cause we some dogs like Hathaway. Until we pass away, laid in the earth with my mink and my drink. Good smoke with some lady shorts, baby, what you think? Uh, you see a shine, never a dull moment. Cause we some dogs like Hathaway. Until we pass away, laid in the earth with my mink and my drink. Good smoke with some lady shorts, baby, what you think? Uh, I was born to lead. I was I born to fly. Your sky high like it used to rock it, but get my eye. It's basically like NASA, and I ain't slowing down. I'm going faster. Oh, the system saying no to master. My liquid flow is plasma. Terminator 2. I terminated crew and two to say I paid a due. Dummies, I laid a few down, and now they shook a few clowns. Overdue a couple crap crews and took a few crowns. But it wasn't for status. Just had to show them suckers who's the baddest. That boy that flow straight from the black addicts. So holla back at us, cause we ain't going nowhere. Trying to open up a new lane and new doors And for that I'm willing to fight a few wars Is you boys? You see a shine, never a dull moment Cause we some dogs like Hathaway Until we pass No, you go right into uh, core issues after this, huh? That's you by yourself, huh? Yep, yep. I normally have guests and stuff like that, but I could talk for an hour about anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. All right, all right. God bless. God bless you. are listening to Straight Talk. You just got finished listening to Local Vocals, and uh, I am one of your hosts. This is the Paladin. This is Tyree Bindham. You know what I mean? You know me. Dude, will be walking, walking down the street, down the street, down the street with the dreadlocks, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just the other day, it's funny. It is so funny that I went and spoke at this engagement. Mm -hmm. And this lady was, uh, I could tell she was looking at me. And I was like, does she think that she know me? She probably think I'm Lorenzo. <laughs> and, and, and right before I left, she was like, you married my best friends. And I was like, I said, how they doing? She was like, <laughs> I don't even question it no more. Yeah, yeah. I, I just step into the role, man. Yeah, I hear you, Doc. <laughs> hey, we got somebody uh, special that's sitting right here that was actually in that same meeting with that lady. <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> same meeting. <laughs> that's funny. But uh, we, we got Mr. Jonathan Lowe in the studio with me. And as far as all the, the things that encompass this man... I don't know, but uh, hopefully we can find out a little bit more about them and uh, hey, and how you serve the community, man. What's up, man? Hey, man, I'm just happy to be here. I've heard so much about you and what you're doing right here. And, man. The uh, last thing I heard was you bought a house on the corner. In, of, uh, in the hood. Uh, hey, it's not the hood. It's community. It's your home. It ain't the hood. It's right. your neighborhood. You know it, what I mean? It's the hood. It's, it's the hood. It's the hood. All right, all right, all right. But, right, right. but no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, definitely, man. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful right there on the corner of uh, Catter Corner to uh, Douglas Park. So I see Douglas. I see the tiger sign. I mean, it's just yeah, it's yeah. Just that's part what's of up. It. You know, you rarely find people who, um, who 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 take that kind of stand in their own community and become a real stakeholder in the community. Sometimes you don't know, say the word stakeholder. Yeah, they're talking about money and investing and financial. But what are you yeah. doing to make it a better place to live? You know what I'm man, saying? Man, you picking my brain today, man. <laughs> I mean, these are things that I was thinking about today. I didn't yeah. even voice them. Oh man, yeah, the, spirit, yeah. the spirit connected like yeah. that. Well, man. you know, man. I appreciate that. I really appreciate you saying that because. You know, it, it's, it's funny that that I have to write a press release today. I, I tried to do it last night, couldn't do it. And and all of the things that I'm talking about in this press release, you just mentioned most of it. You know, either you choose to to look at your community and say, how am I going to make this place better? Mm -hmm. Or you choose to be a predator. Yeah, one of the two, man. I hear you, I hear you, man. You have to... Uh... And not not judging. No, 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 no. Not, I mean, but you know, that's just where it's, it's a choice. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, as I was on this morning, I was telling them, you know, it's not a game in Columbia today. Don't just be idle. Um, even if you rest, that's part of restoration. Um, but you have to do some work in order to receive some kind of rest. So what kind of work are you doing? You get, what type of work? What type of work are you doing? Right. Are you just working to benefit yourself? Or are you working to give back to, if not your community, then the community of your household? That's what you got to start first is the community of your own household. Right. If you're starting in your household, then, I mean, you, you take care of the community because your right. house is going to be under wraps and going to be together. But, you know, too many times I believe we go outside, we, we, we see what happens on the outside. And we don't come home. We talk about it at home, but we don't reprimand what's at home. Right. And, you know, it, it's, it, I know that it's tough. Um, you know, the, 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 this day that we live in yeah. is the most difficult in existence. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the test that we're faced with, and, and sometimes, you know, we don't, you know, I, I, tell, I tell people that we don't really give our youth too many chances. Mm -hmm. They got a couple of strikes, if that. Once you get that one strike, you got that felony charge. Your life, you just, you can just take away president, judge, uh, cop, lawyer. I mean, you just knock out. You knock out, the, you knock out a couple million you worth knock of potential. Out the, the entire first tax, the highest tax bracket. You, you knock it out. Yeah. That ceiling just boom. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm in the same process of basically sharing that, that we're going through a metamorphosis mm -hmm. right now. And... And the the challenge of of those that was walking with Dr. King, mm -hmm. it's it's the same thing, but it's different. Yeah, they sacrificed their lives in order yeah. for us to have it just a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Now you know we we look at W. E. B. Du Bois, we look at all these keen minds, mm -hmm. and, and still to this day we got keen minds out there that are uh, sacrificing their words, their lives, and looking at their investments to basically. Measure and see what I'm, what what am I actually trying to do? Yeah, yeah. And vote with your dollars, even if you don't vote. Yeah, yeah. And we big voters because we ninety percent spenders. Big uh, time. As as a community. Yeah, yeah. And ninety percent. It, and it, and it, it's looking good. Looking good. Yeah, we look good. We look real we look good. good. I was um, you know, I, I don't I don't post much on Facebook, but I do get on Facebook just to see what's going on in the community and friends and all this, and uh, when the iPhone 5 came out, they had all those caricatures and those cartoons about, you know, your lights ain't on, but you're standing in line for the <laughs> iPhone, and, or you do this, and you're standing in line for Jordans, and that's so true. I mean, we, we've we become um, a society of, um, of appearance and status, and um, I, I heard a wise man say a long, a long time ago, people with money don't talk about money, because they're too busy trying to make some more money. Mm -hmm. People without money talk about money, because they're trying to figure out how to get money. Um, so I think our mindset does have to change, and I and I, I think I think we have been we allow ourselves to be shaped and formed uh, by a society that we don't that we don't necessarily live in. We're we're not going to live in the same society as as a, as these high end rappers, um, as these high end entertainers, even the, even the football players, basketball players. We don't we don't live in that society. We live where we live right now. Right. Not saying we can't get there. But until you do get there for that young brother that is trying to get a scholarship and then go on to the next level, you have to take care of where you are and manage yourself properly now. There's no reason why you should have, why um, I saw on, on the TV the other day how you got um, professional athletes uh, filing for bankruptcy and being broke. Well, you can't blame them. You really can't blame them because that's when they were young. You know, they didn't know how to, they didn't see mom and dad manage money well. And they right. didn't know how to manage money. They just know you're supposed to get it and spend it. And that's what they do. Um, so it's unfortunate. But I believe that our mindset has to change. And our mental, our mental capacity and our mental stability has to change. We have to get past uh, what we see with our eyes, begin to think, how can I be an entrepreneur? How can I make this money and flip this money to make me more money? So that when if something happens to me tomorrow, my child is taken care of. Exactly. And there's a value now to be able to take care of our kids. Oh, man. You know, crucial. it's... I just had a conversation with a lady just the other day, and I was like, I was going to renew my license. Okay. And we got into a conversation, and, and she was like, you know, we talked about how many kids I have, and she was like, oh, that's good. And, and just the conversation that we had, it was like, it was the norm was not to take, I was like, no, no, I'll take care of mine. I said, you know, child support paid off on a couple, you know, a couple, we, we, we right there grinding, yeah. a few in college, you know, so to be able to college. say that, yeah, I got two in college, man. Dude, I thought you was like, 
So I just celebrated my 41st birthday. What? You know what I mean? I'm thinking you like 31. Man, I'm an old soul. I'm like I'm actually about a thousand three, but I just happen to be <laughs> sitting right here, 41 years old on Earth. A thousand three. Thousand three. Yeah. But you yeah, know, man, you gotta take care of what's yours. But you know, you bring up so so th this process, and 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 it's so beautiful that you're here, because Bless you. Bless you. because what's happened is is Right now, we got about 13, the, the black community in Colombia, we got about 13,000 people. Okay. It's 12% of the population in Colombia, but also in Missouri and also in the U.S. Okay. 12% across the board. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when we look at our community, there are, you know, it's less than 1% minority business. Mm -hmm. It's less than 1% managerial. And, you know, when we look at the jails, you know, of the 13,000, you cut it in half, you know, 50% men and women, Cut, take all the, all the elderly, take the babies out. Mm -hmm. We got about 3,500 gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And of those 3,500 gentlemen, only about 400 don't have, the, uh, don't have the strike. Wow. That's the numbers that we're working with. Wow, in Columbia. And, and right here in Columbia. Columbia. I, hope you, I hope you're listening to right this. Right here in Columbia. I hope Columbia. you're listening to this. And so, that, that sounds like, what, one out of every, every three? Pretty much. I think it's like one out of three or one out of four. One out of four. Has a strike against them. And, and and so it's and, and most of these men are in minority men's network and they're established. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they made it through. Mm -hmm. Through, you know, they walked the tightrope and made it through the the world of that W. E. B. Du Bois is talking about the double consciousness. Yeah. That you're never really American. You always black and then American. Yeah. African American. Okay, okay. You know, so so it's just a process that right now we're, we're ex, ex, to be able to experience would react to understand our reality, to know what it is we're dealing with yeah. on the real. On the real, yeah. That that right. that that the black man is an endangered species. <laughs> You're right. That's mm -hmm. not just a cliche anymore. It's not just. I mean, there's there's Dr. Joyce Leary with her book, uh, the Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. There's Michelle Michelle Alexander with uh, the New Jim Crow, uh, mm -hmm. mass incarceration in the age of colorblindness, and many other books that actually give us the facts. Yeah. And even when we read W. B. Du Bois, we read Dr. King. These are issues that they identified and already Long time ago. and already passed the passed the baton to us. Yeah. But when we look at us, we're we're addicted to be to the images and the idols, and chasing the material. Yeah. Instead of investing in the and sacrificing in the long term mm -hmm. and actually getting the healing, and that's why I think it's perfect for you to be here. Okay. Because when it comes to the healing. To be an endangered species and to, to, to not see as a benefit and a gift the the profession yeah, of yeah. counseling. Yeah, man. <laughs> is is almost like having the medicine and having the things that you need and not even accepting the healing. Yeah. To true. even start the process. That's true, man. So so man, can, can you share just a little bit about your background with what? us? <laughs> Man, like I said, I'm just honored to be here, man. I'm uh, originally from Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, born and raised. Went to um, a pretty decent high school. Played football there. Uh, was able to get a scholarship to um, Alcorn State University. That's a good school, right? Oh, yeah. It was the, actually, it's the 2012 HBCU of the year. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcorn. <laughs> yeah, I had to put that out there. ASU, Alcorn State University. Um, the SWAC down south. Just want to let everybody know. Um, anyway. Um, met my wife there, um, and we came to, check this out, we came to Missouri on an internship program um, that I knew nothing about that was available, but I, was, I wasn't misinformed or I had no idea it was out there. What? Um, so I, I came up and worked with a couple of professors, did some research, um, and I went back, finished my degree at Alcorn. When I got my degree, I was able to have the blessed opportunity to play a little professional sports, um, so I played ball. Um, and I fell back on my plan. It was really originally my plan A, not my plan B. And I had my degree in communications and journalism. I came to Columbia, began grad school. Um, I, I, I taught for a year while I was here. I got a substitute teacher. I taught at Lang Middle School for a year. Okay. I was a high school coach for a year, for a couple of years. Um, I worked for probably every major <laughs> business in the city, <laughs> uh, State Farm and 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 um, the, the university. And now I am. Um, and besides being active in ministry and at Urban Empowerment, that's uh, understood. You know, yes. I, I, I hang real, real and, tight. And that's, that's initially where we met. 
yeah. quite a few times. Yeah. It was, in, 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 was at UE, in man. Michigan. And it's, um, it's a blessing. Bishop Woods has done an awesome job pulling me in and allowing me to serve there. Um, but it was, aside from all that, what I learned from the Bishop Woods and from Bishop Lawson's um, is that it's not just good just to do God's work on the inside of the house, but you got to take care of the community as well. Um, the Bible tells us that Jesus grew in, in, in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and with man, um, which means he did something to uplift his community. He just didn't um, preach in the tabernacle and not do anything else. He, he touched his community. And with that being said, I, I, work, I, work, I got opportunity to work as a public relations coordinator for Family Counseling Center of Missouri, probably one of the best kept secrets in this city. Probably so. Um, as you were talking mm-hmm. about about the healing process, um, there's a program there called MEND that deals with domestic violence and men with and a violent background. You say background. best kept secret. I, yeah. I, I'm going to stop you there just there Go ahead. for a minute. Go ahead. And, and you know, they write there. So, so oh. and, and everybody yeah. know. Yeah. But then what, it come, what, what we come back to is, is I remember blogging about three years ago. Mm-hmm. And in this blog, I was basically said why men hate to go to the counselor. Hmm. And in the course of this, I was looking at myself. Okay. Because I couldn't stand the idea to think uh-huh. that possibly yeah. I was three things. That, that I was broken. Mm-hmm. That I needed healing. Mm-hmm. And I can get it from somebody that I did not know. Hmm. All three of those things did with one thing, and that's pride. It deals with pride. Our pride um, as a people, as a community, is one of the most overrated aspects of our lifestyle. Um, there is nothing that we're too proud of. And secondly, there's nothing that somebody else hasn't already gone through. You, you, these, Every man will experience the same. <laughs> well, I mean, the things we're doing, if somebody else has gone through it, somebody right. else has done it, even if it wasn't in your city, mm-hmm. there's documentation. Trust me, somebody else has been struggling. Somebody else has been on the on the brink of bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Somebody else has one has been um, has been you know, arrested for domestic violence and made a change, or substance abuse and drug and alcohol abuse, and and uh, other people have been through that. Um, and and it's important that we know that there is healing um, in this community. Uh, Family Counseling Center is a great place. There are great therapists, great counselors there. That's not a negative thing. Um, you got to look at other ways in which you cope. So, you know, when you have a bad day at work, you'd rather go out and spend $9 or however much it costs to buy a pack of cigarettes and increase your chances of lung cancer as opposed to talking through your issues with someone who, who actually is going to listen, you know. And, and, and went to school to do so. And got the knowledge and the tools to be able to offer these things. Yeah. To, to us, but you know, you you the, the parallel that you bring up, there, there's a there's an ancient uh, Cherokee uh, story, and it talks about two wolves. Okay. And one wolf is is really, you know, just you can tell that it's the opposite size, mm-hmm. the ego and the soul. Mm-hmm. And the, the and the man asked uh, or the child asked, uh, you know, which one is going to win because they was battling. Yeah. And it was like whichever one you feed. Hmm. That's true. And really, it talks about the investment. So when we look at our budget each month, you know, what are we spending our money on? <laughs> and, and Everything it, and but less, the right thing. It, basically, it's a beauty to not be able to go to uh, to, to drive by the gas station. You know, <laughs> you already know when you go by the gas station, unless you get a pack of gum. Yeah, you're right. It, you, you feed the other. So yeah, it's you're right. You're right. So so to be able to invest in that, and and, and I, I have to admit, man, that I've been going to counseling myself, uh, you know, kicking and scratching. Hmm. Um, to go to counsel myself for about six months. But you're going. But well, I'm going. But you're going. And I've been doing my talk show for 12 years. Wow. 12 years. years. Wow. Since 2001. Wow, that's what's up. And so I've been serving in this capacity, doing three shows a weekend for so about 1,500 shows. And so this, the therapy that I give to myself mm-hmm. as I research and, and, and refine my and sculpt myself and my soul the therapy was to be able to give that back to the community. Yeah. So to be able to serve yeah. in this capacity. So, but man, it, it's, so my core issues, Okay. you know, yeah. and even with straight talking, it's really getting it, out, getting it off the chest because until you can talk about the issues, until you can talk about the problem, it got you trapped. You know, I look at, um, when you talk about talking about the problem, you ever had, you ever had a cold? 
mm-hmm. you ever had a cold or had had been been, been pretty sick, and uh, you go to the you go to the go to the Walmart, you go to Walgreens, and you pick up a Night Quill or a Day Quill. But when you look at those bottles, it says the nighttime or the daytime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, such and such and such and such and such and such. So you can rest, so you can rest better for medicine, and um, not knowing that Nyquil doesn't deal with your cold, it deals with your symptoms, mm-hmm. um, and we have been medicating with symptoms, with our symptoms for so long, um, that our symptoms are now become. Um, what's the word? Immune to the medication that we are, that we are giving it. Right. Whether that medication is is is, 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 is drugs or alcohol or, or however you medicate or, or or whether it's you know taking a drive down the street or um, walking around downtown, whatever that medication is, it's not working like it should because we're not dealing with the root of the problem, mm-hmm. and the root of every problem starts with you. What happened? The bottom who, line. Who 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 did what to you? Who bothered you? What did you, and, and you know, and, and it's not, not talking or looking at that in a way that's judgmental, mm-hmm. not looking at ourselves in a way that's anything but loving, patient, mm-hmm. showing grace, mm-hmm. you know, really focusing on the healing, the love and the health, the unconditional love and not with a pointed finger mm-hmm. and not with, um, you know, in a, with any negative con- connotation. And so to be able to assess yeah, and, and to do that, it, it's needed. So when we look at our community, mm-hmm. where we have a community that 75% of the mothers are single parent mothers. Wow. And 9% of the men are single parents. So when we look at the state of the black community and, and the, 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 the state of the Institute of Marriage, and all of it, mm-hmm. we're, 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 uh, we're not doing well, man. We're not, but that's reality, though. That's the reality. That's reality. And so there's a resource. There's a resource. So, so you said the best mm-hmm. kept secret. It really shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's there for it. And it's not expensive. Let me throw that out there real quick. It's not expensive. Um, um, there are programs in place in this city that are designed for the middle class, lower middle class um, individual. Designed for the people who, when it when the economy is bad, we already know. We already know that that where, it, where they said it rolled downhill. We already know where it's at. Yeah. So so there's there's a need um, to to offer services and assistance for those that are, are dealing with that. Yeah. There's a. We operate at Family Council Center on what you call the sliding scale fee, uh, which means that you pay for services based upon your income. Um, I can't tell you, can't give you any numbers to say, well, you make 40000 so this is how much you're going to pay. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you it is based upon your income and not off a general, just basic flatline fee. It's based off of what you make. We want we want to help you. If you're not making anything, we can accommodate that. Um, but if the, the services are there. And it's not for substance abuse, drug abuse, but it's for, it's suicide prevention, it's depression, it's anxiety. And a lot of people don't even know that they have anxiety. So, so, so let, let's talk, so depression is when you at home, mm-hmm. you're not really feeling good about yourself, you don't mm-hmm. feel like being around people, and you're just not feeling happy. Mm-hmm. You know, thus that depression, uh, there is a, a normal aspect of depression, but if it's like 20 days out of 30, <laughs> then that's not normal. That's called severe depression. That's called severe depression. That's called severe depression. I mean, depression is, in, is is when your mind is in any state of unhappiness or unsettled. Um, if you have no peace, meaning you you are agitated by everything around you, that's not necessarily anger. That could be that's depression. You got to get with the root of the situation. Um, depression is the number one leading cause towards suicide. The number one. The number one. And a lot of the people who are depressed, sometimes they're good at, at faking it and good at keeping on fronts and appearances. Mm-hmm. But when you're by yourself, sometimes it's, it's you, and you need somebody and there's nobody there, you, you, it's, it's easy to spiral. It is. It is. I mean, you got to think about, um, that's what that's what I, I, I pray that is not happening in this community. But like you said, it's a reality because you got, when those young two young men were gunned down this year, um, I, I'm just waiting until the end of the school year to see how many of our young people dropped out of high school 
or gave up or retaliated mentally. You don't necessarily have to always retaliate physically, but retaliated mentally, shutting down, um, not trying to deal with the root of the issue and not allowing people to see inside them. And you know, everybody is affected by everything. When we, when we look at this community, mm -hmm. and I might look at this, give the numbers and statistics just for people's general purposes, mm -hmm. but it's not a black issue. No. It's not a poor issue. But what I'm saying is, yeah. you know, there's there, Columbia's dealing with some stuff. You know, we got the rift between the black community, the 12 different factions. We got the rift between town and gown. Mm. <laughs> that 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 rift that hasn't went went away. Mm -hmm. You got the rift between the the uh, minority community and the city when it comes to the sharp end debacle. Okay. You know, when basically or even part. So we got so many different rifts, and most people that come here be like, ah, oh, you know, mm -hmm. not aware. And if you've been there for a while, and and you you see the symptoms mm -hmm. of the things that was we never healed from. Right. And and we think that that we can move past it without getting some type of healing, some type of trust, some type of place to go to to have that inner peace. Mm -hmm. You know, our community is depressed. I mean, they are literally self-medicating uh, to to get through this yeah. right now, uh, especially the youth. 50% of them can't find employment. Oh, man. This, with this United Way campaign that I was... Just, you heard uh, about some, something with oh economics? Oh my gosh! Okay, man. I, I heard something, but I, uh, I didn't know what. So well, please. well, just the numbers that they provided us for um, fifty five hundred uh, people in in Colombia are living below the poverty line. Um, check this out. This number blew me away. Forty three percent of our young people in Colombia public schools are eating on a free and reduced lunch. 43 percent mm -hmm. that is that's almost and, unreal and they said another 17 are struggling part of the working poor wow. and, and and i remember talking to uh the mayor and okay. he shared angst about that specific statistic mm. and shared back to back three or four statistics and it's like i'm embarrassed mm -hmm. you know and I mean, we all we all to be not necessarily that we have, we have a city that doesn't provide but that the state of the economics of so creative, yeah. so vibrant, so, you know, a people that really when we look at on a world scale, mm -hmm. it's almost like we trapped into entertainment. <laughs> See, now you're moving into something else there. It's you, like, you're moving into something else with that one. Uh, yeah, I'm moving into something else. So I, Go, I, I'm I, not going to stop you. This your show. But we trap. No, but actually, you know, we trap in the entertainment. So that's just part of it. When you think about how many people, how, how many of our youth, and what they aspire to be, do they aspire to go into mental health? I don't even know it's an option. They don't aspire to be no mortician. <laughs> but morticians make more than physicians. They don't, they don't aspire to be doctors. Do they aspire to be, I mean, rapper, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, athletes? Athletes, rappers, and, and promoters, and entertainers. You know, entertainers. I mean, that, that's, that's or, or school. Yeah. You know, some of our, the last couple of generations, they really counted on school as the way out. Really, yeah. it's the way out of the hood. Yeah. That's and, the and way it, out of poverty, the, the way into the middle class. I um, do this campaign that, that we've been doing. United Way is a great organization. Don't get me wrong. I haven't really, I haven't really, you know, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, when I hear United Way, I, I know of, of the overall mission and the umbrella, but as far as any sub thing substantial that I've been able to connect with, mm -hmm. I, ha I haven't been able to, to have that type of relationship. Relationship with seeing, yeah. I mean, that new community impact model that they're doing is focused on young people and youth and providing funding and resources to the programs. It's going to be based around young people. If you, if the program is that right? Is, yeah. I mean, I got like three or four programs. It, I just they, they on the shelf because no money. No, um, well, we should we should have got that grant out there. I Maybe mean, we should have wrote that grant proposal because the the the, the, re, the resources is what I'm saying are out there. The programs are out there. The question is, number one, are they educated about it? Number two, are they willing to participate? Mm -hmm. Because there's that pride issue again. Instead of All me right. going pride after is school, no good to a dead man. Oh man! So instead of me going after school and hanging. You know, down the street at the corner of my boy's house, I'm gonna go to this after school program, and or I'm gonna go to work, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something constructive you know, with my time. Man, getting past the the cool factor. Oh man, 
or, or what I call the fool factor. But, but getting past the factor of being your own number one hater. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Ultimately. Because anything that you're doing that's not for your benefit and for your productivity and for your future legacy, yeah. you're wasting money. You're hating on yourself more than anybody else could. Yeah, and, and pushing is not is not productivity, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Max Scholars. There you go. Shout out to Max Scholars. They know how to support each other. They sure do. And challenge each other. And so we school. make this guap. Yeah, at every school. Yeah. Rockbridge, Hickman, the yeah, middle school, school, Oakland, all of them. They do a great job. Definitely. Um, but, you know, the... The, the United Way is a great was a great organization, but it kind of, it kind of trips me out, um, Tyree. How I read the newspaper and see Columbia is number ten on the list for um, retirement cities, or number twelve in America for progressive cities, and all of this stuff. Great magazine, number one hardest working city. Number one hardest working city in the in the in, the, in America. It's the twelfth most educated city in the world. In the in America. And four to three percent of our students in are um, free and reduced lunch. And seventy nine percent of the African Americans are dropping out each year. The achievement gap process, World Cafe, they talked about it. They tried to do something. I don't know what they're doing. Molly, Chris, Doctor Doctor Belcher, y'all need to give give with us and give us an update. But but that's just where it's at. Mm -hmm. And you know I'm I'm trying to do my best to to figure it out. Yeah, I was one. Hmm. And I remember they had a big meeting. I was like, why why y'all got me here? I said, y'all going to talk, I said, how y'all going to stop the dropout rate? If y'all ain't talking to the dropout. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, you say you're talking to the dropout, but that's true though. I mean, follow up is very crucial. That's one thing at, at FCC that, that they pride themselves on is some type of follow up. Because um, you know what? I believe you can get people to come. You can get people into programs, into counseling, and to begin the healing process. You ain't got to trick them. You got to just, uh, is it an awareness campaign? Is it, is it, is it a, you got to get the word out there. You, you, social media? But see, then you, in certain fields, you can't do social media. You serve you right. So you ain't meet, meeting the people. Well, but, but let me ask you a question. Go ahead. And then we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. Um, the question is this. That I, I would say pride, but the number one thing is we've seen a whole bunch of poverty pimps. We've seen a whole bunch of programs that really are in existence because of the lack of effectiveness and efficiency in being able to battle and combat mm -hmm. some of the ills that are affecting uh, the families. Mm -hmm. So the, the families are losing. Mm -hmm. And so we have organizations, and really the whole mental health industry is created because of our inability as a species to be able to effectively heal our, own, our fellow brothers and sisters in our communities. Correct. And so something that's initiated from an aspect of, of the science model, which is the education, the scholarship, the knowledge base, have come in to help really, and you see with urban, so the spiritual base, mm -hmm. 250 some churches, and we still got all these problems. And then you got the, the other part of that is the, the social aspect and there's not too many social things to, for the youth to do for the black community and got one juke joint so you got all of these pieces that are in place to try to fix it mm -hmm. but the beginning starts with trust the organizations that you mentioned yeah what the community wants to know that's out there is can we trust can we them? trust these people can we trust them? can we trust them that's the number one thing if the community doesn't feel like they can trust you, they ain't getting used. It's, 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 why would I go back? So until, the ch until an effort is made mm -hmm. to to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and to say, you know what, we trust y'all, we sorry, we not doing it. Let us know how we, <laughs> how, what we need to do, but to show that vulnerability, man, to show that to give the olive branch, but also to keep giving it, mm -hmm. and, and to to effectively go out and. and Effect a change, but the trust—that's the number one thing I've seen. Trust, trust is an issue. I can, I can, I can effectively say that um, trust is an issue, and and I believe that um, the way you get the community to trust you is to just show them some unconditional love, invite them in, and don't restrict them. Um, instead, show them, lead by example, instead of putting um, a stamp down on them. And, and trying to hold them down. I know um, I know Bishop Lawson is a fan of this, and we do it also at Urban. You know, when you come in, 
I'm not going to rush over to you to tell you to take your hat off in the building. Well, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a sign of aggression almost, you know. I may, you know, I may ask you, hey, could you move your hat, sir? But if you're not trying to move your hat, I'm not going to put you out. You know, you need to be able to know I can still come in here and worship and do what I need to do and, and, and be comfortable. Um, because it's not it's not us that that's trying to um, I'm trying trying to get you close to me I'm trying to get you close to the father um, and and the only way you can do that is see that you know I got your back you and your soul don't wear no clothes man none it ain't even got a gender no nope. <laughs> <laughs> don't even have a gender man you a trip but you know it, it, it it's funny that 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 we get quite a few people that talk about the the pants and just and you know these youth men, I, I applaud them. Um, that when you actually sit down and talk to them, they're smart, mm -hmm. they're educated, they have ideas. Um, they just simply want, they want the. Um, we sh we trained them, we showed them, we sculpted, we molded them, and we gave them our all. Mm -hmm. Now can we facilitate the process and trust them? Mm -hmm. With the tools that we gave them, mm -hmm. and then couple that with the resources, and say, "Lead us." That's a good question. Just look at the just look at most of the church organizations. Mm -hmm. There's a few about to die because they forgot how to recruit the young. Well, and so urban empowerment is one that that's has has an effective model of of openness and inclusion, and yeah. uh, being able to look at the different cultures and embrace that. Yeah. Um, Bishop Lawson is, is, is another one with mm -hmm. Chosen Generation and, and but you know there's quite a few out there um, that are the pillars the six or seven pillars of the community still mm -hmm. I had a man from jail write me a letter and say what about a black church alliance mm. to be able to on the pulpit start talking about the reality of the situation in the community Instead of saying the same old, same old sermons, but give them some factual, real life information that's happening from the from a social aspect mm -hmm. and address it more uniquely mm. than than to necessarily do the particular same. Not, not hating. No, yeah, yeah, I understand. The same sermons. Yeah. And so that, that I, it was interesting yeah. that that we get a lot of feedback from people and they listen. They yeah. lock down and. I mean, Missouri got more jails than is the second second state in the United States. The governor said, "Y'all can't build no more jails. Y'all gonna, gonna have to figure out a different way to address the problem than locking them up. Wow, locking the black, blacks and browns up. Wow, it's California, Texas, then Missouri should be third. Really? Yeah. And yeah, we're not even the third biggest state. Those yeah. are the first two biggest states in the country. Yeah, and 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 they got them. And so Missouri is one. You know, when it comes to St. Louis, the murder capital of the world. We got Kansas City that's that's really racing to, to catch up. Then we got the Cape, we got Columbia, Killico is what they call it, and a few other places that's that's right around here that that's some definite issues that we're having, man. So, mm -hmm. but the first step, and I will say this, that I um, when I said that I did not want to do counseling or that, that I had a problem with that, my pride, uh, I paid a lot for my pride. Hmm. Okay. I, I paid a lot for. For being prideful, for not um, trusting in competent physicians. Yeah, you know, I, th I think we need to ask the question: um, What does trust look like to this community? Uh, I've been told that if you're not from Columbia, <laughs> Columbians ain't trying to really mess with. Take them by fifteen years. The number to call is four four three eight two five five. That's four four three talk. Of course, Wanda Faye, uh, Almeida. I hope y'all call in, baby. The last few minutes, the last minutes, the twenty minutes is y'all's. So feel free to call in. And for the audience, please answer that. Can you ask that question again? What does trust look like to this community? To the city of Columbia, Missouri, what does it look like? Do I have to be from Columbia for you to trust me? Like I said, you know, somebody else in another city experienced what you experienced. I, my first year myself, my first year in college, saw my teammate gunned down, shot in the head. I had to bury him the next week after we played the game that Saturday. It's not like this is my first, my first rodeo. Um, seeing and hearing about people doing this to ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in Shreveport, Louisiana, my pastor in uh, Shreveport, Dr. Harry Blake, they came into the church on their horses, pulled him out, beat him down the stairs, and just uh, issued him an apology 50 years later, 40 years later. 
So it's not like it's, it's something that's just now going on right. and only in Colombia. Right. It's taking place across the country. So what do we have to do to, to, to what do we have to do to gain your trust, Columbia? What, what what is it that you need to see from us? I mean, and 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 be specific. Don't just say come to Douglas Park and have a barbecue and some and let us you know do what we want to do. But what's our, what, if we you give us some responsibility and also take up some responsibility for yourself? And this is straight talk. So the number to call is four four three eight two five five. That's five seven three four four three eight two five five. Man, I appreciate you an- you asking that question. Uh, that's one of the things mm-hmm. that it's it's like the elephant in the room, mm-hmm. the writing on the wall. Just get straight to the point. Straight to the point. This is straight talk, right? This is straight talk. Get straight to the point. And I've been here for quite a while, mm-hmm. you know. And it took me. I've been here for at least twenty five years. Mm. Okay. Twenty five. So you're not from here. From St. Louis. You from St. Louis? I escaped St. Louis to come here to the country. Okay. <laughs> you know, up there, I would have either been a pimp, I would have been a, a, a gang bang, gang banger, which is the reason my mom moved us down here to Columbia. Okay. Um, or I'd have been running something or a politician, because the Clay family, Henry Clay and all them, that's that's my family up there. Oh, okay. Uh, or 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 the pulpit. They tried to train me to because my family had their own church, Peace Baptist Church, oh, for okay. fifty five years up there in St. Louis. Wow. Which is me continuing that legacy, which is why I do a core issue. Okay, so a pimp, a preacher, or a politician. Yeah, or a rapper. Or a rapper. And so I, I'm doing a little bit of... <laughs> Producer. <laughs> Produce. So the interesting thing is, so I came down here, but it took, it's still, to mm-hmm. this day, Yeah. and I've put in consistent time, mm-hmm. it's still difficult for people to trust my motive and service mm-hmm. and dedication to this community. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to hear from Columbia. We need to hear from Columbia. We need to hear from Columbia. How long? How long we got to put in valiantly, yeah, consistently, yeah, for y'all to accept us? Yeah, and I understand that. But with me, it's just a little bit different. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Baha. Okay. So it's a little bit of the religious prejudice, you know, that seeps in that people really don't understand. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, it's a little bit different. Just a little bit different. And I've had this conversation with most of the pastors in town. You mm-hmm. know, we we good like that. Yeah. But it, it's it's still kind of just and it's a little bit different. It's it's not. Instead of researching, got to research to figure out yeah. what the fruit is, what the life is, what the words say from the own tongue. Right. And so, you know, that's that's part of the challenge for, for just for me. Mm-hmm. And so, I know a lot of other people out there. I've, I've heard it from so many. Um, so, feel free to call in four four three eight two five five. Let's take a quick break, man. When we come back, let's jump into the last uh, part of it and also give a chance for. I know some people are partying down there at Douglas Park, so I saw you down there. Uh, just doing it nice, so I don't know exactly what was going on, but it's, it looked beautiful. It looked beautiful. So the uh, let's take a quick break, and I think we have to play this right here. All right, keep it locked right here, 89.5. You are listening to 89.5 FM, a Missouri source for in-depth news, diverse talk, and music of the world. It's not just radio, it's community radio, KLP in Columbia, Jeff City, Sedega, the Lake, Mobile, Macon, Fayette, Fulton, all them countries, this is the broadcast service of the New Wave Corporation. Join the community radio crew. Come and experience. 